The thing I want to talk to you today is about how to build a conversation with a person with dementia. Lots of people don't know how to do that. And my inspiration comes from building fires with my grandson. I've been building fires with him safely on our porch. So the first thing we're going to do is just look at building a fire. And some people have built a fire before. I'm sure there's a few people in here who've built a fire. So we're going to talk about the steps to building a fire. And then I'm going to look at how that compares to the steps of building a fire, a conversation, if you will, with a person with Alzheimer's disease. And then after all that, I'll tell you a story. Okay? So, uh, how do we build a fire? Anybody want to go? What do we need to do? Wood. Get wood. Okay. Good. What kind of wood? Dry. dry. We need dry wood. Good. What size? We're starting a fire. Small kindling. Kindling, kindling. Kindling is like what? Tell me what kindling is. Uh, anything that would catch a spark. Something. Leaves, leaves, so, straw. Uh, okay, good. Twigs, straw. Good. Then what do we do with that? We're not ready for a match yet. We'll get a match here, but something's going to happen here. What are you going to do? We need a fridge. We need an area to have the fire. We need an area. This is good. We probably need that up here before this, right? We need a safe area, right? It's a good idea. <laughs> it's a very good idea, right? Right. We need a safe area. We need kindling, right? Dry wood. Yeah? What are we going to do? Build it. Build it. Right, so you have to make like a little teepee, right? You're going to really put that kindling together, right? Because if it's all just scattered, it's not going to light, right? So we're going to put the kindling together. Maybe, I'm just going to call it build a teepee. I think everybody knows what that means, yes? Build a teepee. I don't know how to spell teepee, so the hell with it. Is that it? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so we're going to build a teepee and then we have a match, right? Hopefully we have a match. I'm not building like this, you know. I'm not doing flint and stuff. I can't. I can't. Sorry, I can't. So here we go with a match, right? So what do we do with a match? We strike it, and we usually light the fire in a few places, right? We don't just light it one place. It might not take, so we light it in a few places. Yes? Yeah. Okay. This one's not rocket science, right? In a few places, and then what do we do? Add wood. We add wood. We add little pieces of wood, right? Keep it going. Sometimes what do we need to do to get it going? We need to stoke it. We might need to blow on it, right? We need to blow on it. So we're going to add wood. And then we're going to blow on it. And through the whole process, we're going to pay attention, right? Because if we don't pay attention pretty much all the way down the line, the fire will go out, right? Turn it back on it, fire goes out. Don't blow on it, fire goes out. Don't add wood, fire goes out. Okay, good? All right, let's go to conversation. You guys built a good fire. You're welcome. So. Stay with me. <laughs> In order to have a conversation with a person with dementia, we need to find a safe area. Yeah? Safe. Safe for me with dementia may, need, may mean quiet, right? May mean I'm comfortable. I'm not hungry. I'm not thirsty. Right? I have, my needs are met. That makes it a safe area. People aren't driving by, honking their horns. People aren't walking in and out of a room. These kinds of things. My needs are met. Maybe even sort of focused. Focused. I'm not going to have a conversation with you if you have dementia over here. 
I'm going to sit right here with you. Safe area, right? Good. And I'm going to sit with you, too, just so you know, because I'm not going to have a conversation with you like this, because that ain't going to be very fun for you. Mm -hmm. We'll call that safe, okay? So that's one. we got a safe area. We need kindling. What in the world is kindling in a conversation? Guess. You guys aren't my usual audience. What's kindling in a conversation with a person with dementia? Well, topics. Topics. Any topics? No, probably what's important to the, to the person. What they know about. What they want to talk about, right? Got to know your person. <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. Thank you. Um, you have to know your person. What will turn them on? What will make them speak? You got to know where they are in the illness. Because in early stage, I can still talk about things today. Kind of sometimes I can, right? But in middle stage, I'm going to talk about things from my past. That's pretty, pretty common, that I'm able to talk about anything from my past. You have to know my past pretty well, right? Where did I take a honeymoon? What was my dog's name? Where did I go to high school? These kinds of things, because those things will really make us a good fire, right? So we got that. Dry wood, I don't know. I had a weird joke about that, but it left me, thank God. So, um, <laughs> all the while, paying attention already here. Paying attention already, okay? Great deal of attention. To drum up this conversation, a person with dementia can't do that on their own, right? They've lost initiative, they can't bring it. You're bringing it. You're bringing the fire to them, okay? Um, build a teepee. I don't know. Any ideas? Build a teepee? Start talking. I'm going to say start talking. Start talking. You're kind of fishing at this point. I'm not sure, right? Sometimes somebody will want to talk about one thing and they won't want to talk about another thing. It's almost the match. I've almost jumped. I've jumped to the match. If anyone can come up with a teepee, well, maybe we'll leave it open if you come up with a teepee. That would be good. What's important to them? Well, it's pretty much like that. Mm -hmm. And here we want to do things like make statements probably, not ask questions so much. You know that 54 Ford you had? That was one hot car. What, this is a difference, what kind of car did you have back then? There's a big difference in that. If I'm talking about, oh yeah, you used to go to the drive-in, I'm making lots of statements. So we could almost say that making statements instead of asking questions is a way of building a TP. Okay? We're going to make statements and that's going to help them, right? If I ask a whole lot of questions like, where did you go to high school? They're not going to be able to respond to that as well as if I go into that life and say, when you were at Niagara Falls, did you ride that little boat? Did you ride that Lady of the Mist or whatever they call that thing? That, okay, it's a question, but I'm also giving information. All right? So, so we'll say it's statements. And then we're going to light a match. We're just going to kind of poke around in there and see what takes fire, right? Because I might have to talk about four different things. But suddenly one thing's going to go. One thing's going to light. Really important. Stay with the fire there, right? Stay right there. You lose your agenda. Forget your agenda. Whatever you thought would work isn't working. But what they're doing, what they're saying, what they're responding to is working, right? So flame that fire. Fan that fire. Don't flame it. Fan it. <laughs> Fan that fire, right? What they want to talk about. And they, want to, they may want to talk about how your jacket looks today. And that'll be fine, because that's what we're going to Oh, this brown one. Would you, would you like to touch this one, see what it feels like? Yeah, it's a shiny one. You know, you're going to talk about whatever it is they want to talk about. Right? So maybe it isn't some piece of wood that you brought to the fire, but they're giving it to you. OK? Stay with it. Right? So. We pay attention. Stay on topic. This is not easy to do. 
especially when people are somewhere in middle stage, because uh, they may not have all their words. Right? They have some words. So you're kind of acting and piecing their stuff together sometimes. They piece it together for them. They'll say four words in the sentence, and you'll say it sounds like, oh, it sounds like this. And you're kind of you know, poking around, blowing on the fire a little bit to see if you can get that fire and that flame up. Okay? So um, now we have a fire a conversation. Yeah? Yes? Yes? Okay. This is the most important thing, probably, of all of it. And, um, yeah, I was going to say something else. Um, can I tell you a story? Would you like to hear a story? Yes. Yeah? Okay. This is a new, uh, like I said, this is a new exercise for me, so I you know I'm sort of juggling with it to see if I can fit it into there. Um, what the initial thinking about it was actually building fires and toasting marshmallows. And so in the end, you get a treat. Once you build a fire, you get a treat. If you build a conversation with a person with Alzheimer's disease, you can get a treat. And I've gotten a lot of them. So had a lot of marshmallows, if you will. Um, I was working with a man named Mr. He was 85 years old, had a very thick Irish brogue. He smoked 40 years of his life. He coughed all the time. He had middle stage Alzheimer's disease and not many sentences in his life um, by that time. He and I took up smoking. I took up smoking with him. Common ground, safe area, place to talk. I didn't smoke, but what did I care? Um, I was willing to play any game. Uh, so we were looking at a, a photo album of his siblings, and there were 13 of them. They were Irish. So there was sister so-and-so and this and that. And, and me, I'm, I'm looking at them, and I'm seeing a handsome guy. And me, I'm looking for a handsome guy. I don't care if they're dead. It doesn't matter to me. If they're <laughs> handsome, they're handsome. All right, so um, I'm having a cigarette with him, and, I'm, and I say, your brother Pierce. And I'm having to speak really loud. He, he can't hear very well. And he goes, ah. He goes, Pierce, aye. Pierce. You know, he's a fine lad. And I go, did he have a lot of girlfriends? My question, really, Nancy? <laughs> Anyhow, did he have a lot of girlfriends? He can't hear me. He says, did he have a lot of what? He said, girlfriends, you know, people that liked him. He said, I don't know. So he has a coughing fit, big coughing fit. I go get him some water. He has Alzheimer's disease. We start over. Your brother Pierce. Pierce, I is a fine lad. We start, I mean, we go right over. Did he have any girlfriends? Did he have any what? Uh, little variations. Ah, he says, that wasn't so important. This is a guy that's not having regular conversations. Sounds like he is, but he's not, really. This is unusual. He says, that's not that important, so I'm intrigued. I'm like, oh. He goes, the important thing <clears throat> has a big coughing fit. I'm not kidding you. Has a big coughing fit, a little too much glitch time in Alzheimer's disease. We go back to the beginning. Okay? Patience. Fanning the fire. <laughs> Patience. <laughs> go back. He goes, the important thing is whether a person is genuine. You know, like they listen to you when you're talking. I cried. <laughs> I cried like this. Um, I found out at that time and, and several times after that that people with Alzheimer's disease, no matter what stage they're in, are often written off 
as not able to communicate or having nothing going on in there. And um, I found that I had whatever that stuff is to be able to sit and chat with someone and, um, and find their beautiful selves. And I, and I was able to do that a lot. And based on what you said last week, Steve, which is, you know, give us a story and then give us something. I was thinking, you know, I walk around with all these stories and I feel great because they're mine, you know, I was like, I got them. But I thought, well, how can I, how can I really train other people how to do that? So that's why this emerged to, you know, give some real tips on how to get what you need or get something amazing from people with dementia. Thank you very much for your attention. You got your marshmallow? I brought you marshmallows. Oh. If you want to take one home, you can do them over a candle or something. Yeah, we do them at home. That's really, they are really going to be offered. 